Hi everyone, in this video we'll take a look at creating a repetition structure. We'll use the for statement inside of a C-sharp program and we'll use counter controlled repetition. Typically when we use the for statement we're using what's called definite repetition. That means we really know what or we really know how many times we want to execute the loop before we even start it. Let's take a look at the for statement. So if you look at line 12, this is called the for header or the for statement header. And this single line of code really has everything we need to control our loop. So we have the for keyword, and then in parentheses we really have three statements. First we're initializing i to 1, we're first declaring and initializing i to 1. This is our loop control variable. We're going to modify this variable throughout the execution of our loop, and then use this loop control variable in a condition to determine whether we continue or not. Next is our uh, loop continuation condition. Our loop continuation condition checks the loop control variable uh, in some type of condition which evaluates to boolean true or false. If the boolean value is true, we continue executing the loop. Uh, if it's false, we exit out of the loop. Next, we increment or decrement or modify the loop control variable. Now, typically in a, a for loop, uh, for instance, counter-controlled repetition, we're just going to add one to the to the uh, the control variable each time through the loop. But you can in this for loop, especially in C sharp, uh, add other statements. So we could modify the loop control variable in another way. So we could add five to it each time through the loop. We can also put multiple statements in here. So for instance, if the uh, you know if we want to modify two variables, maybe i is dependent on some other arithmetic equation. So we execute uh, one arithmetic equation and then we modify i based on the results of that equation. You can do that. You can actually put multiple statements in here. Uh, just comma separate those multiple statements. We're just going to show you the, the typical uh, scenario where we increment or decrement the loop control variable by one. Inside the loop body, I'm just going to put an uh, output of the value i. And note that the for body starts with an open curly brace and it ends with a, a closed curly brace. So if the loop continuation condition is true, we'll go into the for body, execute all of the statements in the for body. Uh, detect the end of the for body, and then jump back up, modify our loop control variable, then test our loop continuation condition. If it's true, again, execute the for loop. Whenever this condition evaluates to false, we jump out of the for loop to the next statement. Let's go ahead and, and run it and take a look at what happens uh, in this uh, typical scenario. So I'll hit F11 so we can execute it line by line. And you'll notice when it detects the, the for statement, the first thing it does is it initializes uh, i. So it declares i. And then we're going to assign the value of 1 to i, or initialize it. And now you can see we have a local variable i is equal to 1. Next, we're going to check the loop continuation uh, condition. You can see i is less than 11 evaluates to true. That's because 1 is less than 11. And we start to execute our for body. Notice the first time through, we do not increment i. So we're going to execute uh, the body of the for loop. And I'll, I'll put the output window over here so you can see it. So we output the value 1. Now it's going to jump back up. It's going to, we're going to modify the value of our loop control variable. So you can see it changes to 2. Now we check our loop continuation condition. 2 is less than 11. That evaluates to true. So we do execute the body of our for loop. And we output the value of 2. Now we jump back up, modify i. And you can see the sequence. I'll speed through it a little bit here. So execute it with the for loop. Jump back up. Now we have i is equal to 4. Still true. i is equal to 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 
And now we jump back up, we, we're going to increment or add 1 to i, so i now becomes 11. 11 is less than 11, evaluates to false. So now we're going to jump over the for body and on to the next statement in our program. So that's the basic for loop. So we first we declare a loop control variable, then we initialize the loop control variable. We have a loop continuation condition, which checks to see if the if the loop for loop should continue or not, and then we modify that loop control variable to control how many times our for loop is going to execute. <clears throat> so let's talk about a few exceptions to the standard for loop. First of all, you notice that when we were inside the for loop, i existed in our local variables. Once we exited out of the for loop, our, our variable i no longer existed. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So you notice that while we're in the for loop, we have this variable i. As soon as we jump out of it, though, now i no longer exists. We're still in the main method but i no longer exists. That beca that's because if we declare i inside of the for loop statement, it becomes local to that for statement. As soon as we leave the for loop, it's now out of scope. So if we were to try to attempt to uh, access i outside of the loop, we would get an error message. So it's saying it does not exist in the current context. Well, what we could do is we could declare i outside of the for loop. And there's a couple ways we can do that. Oft I oftentimes see uh, that we have i assigned an initial value inside the for loop. However, in C Sharp, uh, any of the three statements that we've looked at inside the for loop are optional. So what we can't do is we can declare and initialize i before we get into the for loop. Then in the for loop, we still need this semicolon, but we can leave out declaring and initializing the loop control variable. Now if we run it, we'll see that i is still accessible outside the loop. Uh, this is useful if you want to know what condition uh, the loop control variable was in when we exited the loop, or if you want to keep track of the results of the loop uh, outside of the loop body itself. Okay, let's talk about the loop continuation condition. Now, the loop continuation condition uh, has a common problem. It's called off by one. Off by one means that we haven't really considered the condition in the right way and we're off by one. It comes into play typically when we're deciding between the conditional operators less than or less than and equal to or greater than versus greater than or equal to. So for instance if we use the condition conditional operator less than or equal to then inside of our for loop we're going to output the value 11. If we intended only to include numbers up to 10, less than or equal to 10 would be uh, the right condition. If we put i as less than 10, but we intended to include the value 10, again, we have an off by one error, and we need to change the value to 11. I think when you're first starting out program, programming, a good recommendation is to always use less than or equal to inside of a for loop. It seems to make more sense logically, but note that you know, you'll run into a lot of examples in code where the, the condition is uh, just less than or just greater than. So be careful with that off by one error, and uh, a good practice is to, to test your results to make sure that they're turning out the way you anticipated them to.
Okay, leaving off the increment or decrement. So now we're not modifying our loop control variable inside the for statement. This is fine. We can modify it inside of the for body. Still get the same results. However, be careful because when we move that that uh, that increment or decrement outside of the for loop, sometimes it gets lost in code. And you leave yourself vulnerable to an infinite loop then. Remember that we need to modify the loop control variable such that eventually this loop continuation condition evaluates to false. And that's when our for loop ends. If we never reach a false condition, our loop will continue forever. And we have what's called an infinite loop. So let's, let's try that. If we take out the I++ and execute it, you'll see that it's just going to go on and on forever because our loop control variable never leaves one. It's never modified from the value one. So that's it. That's a, the basics of a for loop, typically used for uh, definite repetition when we know the number of times we want to repeat a statement or statements inside of our program.